Greetings glass fusers, in this video I'm going to show you how I created this reactive test tile plate. If you're not yet familiar with the concept of reactive glass, essentially certain glass colors have a higher sulfur bearing content which will react with other colors of glass that have a higher copper bearing content. And in this video I will show you the test tiles I created to test out which glasses would react with which. There are handouts from Oceanside which give out a list of reactive glasses, both the sulfur and the copper bearing, which you can use to compare which glasses we already have that might react with one another or which glasses you could potentially purchase to create your design. The copper bearing colors that I used were a peacock green, turquoise blue, deep aqua, and teal green. The high sulfur content colors that I used were a yellow white, an orange opal, a sunflower yellow opal, and the lemongrass opal. I also tried out using the Spectrum Clear Reactive Opal Art Glass and the Spectrum White Reactive. Uh, these glasses should have a reaction with each other and any high copper bearing glass color. Now if you've ever heard me suggest to do a test on any of your glass if you're not sure what the result will be through a firing, this is not exactly what I mean, but this is what I mean, is to create some tests, take pictures before, take pictures after, test it at different levels of firing and in different ways. By no means do your tests need to be this elaborate, but since I'm trying to compare multiple types of glass together and see how they react, I'm attempting to create uh, a design out of them so I can use all of my test tiles in a final project. My first set of tiles consist of the first layer being a 1 inch white opal reactive or clear reactive, the second layer of a half inch square copper bearing glass, and then a third layer of a quarter inch square sulfur bearing glass. My second set of test tiles have a first layer of a regular spectrum clear or white one inch square, a second layer of a half inch square sulfur bearing glass, and a third layer of a quarter inch square copper bearing glass. The variables that I'm testing in this experiment are how the sulfur colors are reacting with the copper colors, how the copper colors react with the reactive clear and the reactive opal, the difference of which color is on top, see if there's a difference in how that reaction happens, and then uh, if the reaction is intensified by increased heat. So I will check the reactions at Lacy Contour as well as Full Fuse. And here are my results after the lacy contour firing. Looking closely, I didn't have many reactions with the yellow-white test tiles, but the sunflower test tiles had some reactions with the turquoise, a little bit maybe with the teal, definitely with the peacock. That turquoise is definitely very reactive. It also had reactions with orange and lemongrass. Maybe uh, the lemongrass had some with the deep aqua, possibly with the teal and the peacock definitely also reacted with the orange and the lemongrass. For the test tiles with the copper bearing second layer, I didn't notice much reaction with the base layer of the copper reactive uh, opal art and transparent, but there were some reactions with the turquoise and deep aqua in the sunflower and the orange and the lemongrass and the teal green and peacock had some reactions with the sunflower yellow, with the orange, and with the lemongrass. Then looking closely at the back of some of the pieces, the turquoise had some reactions with the clear transparent, but you could only see it on the reverse side. So I decided to do some tests with just the transparent red reactive and the white opal reactive, along with some copper inclusions to see how they would fare, just to see uh, 
rough side up, rough side down to see if either side of the white had any difference in reaction and just in different combinations. And I observed that it didn't matter which side you fired the white opal reactive, but the clear transparent reacted had different amounts of reaction depending on whether the rough side was up or down. So definitely test it out and you can feel on the glass which side is rough. There's kind of some ripples on one side versus the other. And the rippled side is the one that has the smaller streaks and the smooth side is the one that has the overall uh, color reaction that you see. Second column. Now back to our regularly scheduled programming. What to do with all those test tiles you just made. If you've made as many test tiles as I have, you are going to want to try and incorporate them into a project. So I ended up finding a mold that would hold just about all of my test tiles. They're actually all included here. And I created a design that I was happy with. First layer is just some clear that I pieced together. And since I'm going to be bringing this to a full fuse to see what the reactions will look like at higher temperatures, I need to bulk up the rest of my glass that is a single layer. And so I chose to first glue down all of my test tiles and then I sifted some black powdered frit over top of everything. So it would get all over my exposed first layer as well as fall into all of the cracks in between each of my tiles. Remember when sifting powders you do need to be wearing a mask and 95 or particulate respirator are best especially if you're doing this often and I recommend raising up your piece so it's on some little stilts of some kind that way any frit that falls to the side or on your kiln paper can just be tapped off onto you should have a piece of newspaper underneath to catch any excess frit uh, that can be reused for other projects and I just used a dry brush to brush off all the excess powder that was on any of my test tiles so I wouldn't have any black frit obscuring them. Now my sifted layer of powder frit is not thick enough to constitute a second layer so I am adding chunks of shock frit, just chunky bits, uh, to create a cobblestone effect and this will make up my second layer. The areas of clear frit will diffuse the color of the black powder frit underneath it and create dark crevices, kind of like a cobblestone or glass mosaic. After a full fuse and a slump firing, these are our results. Looking closely, there are more intense reactions uh, with different colors than there were at the lacy contour firing, so we do know that temperature matters. And you can see in some colors there were reactions where we didn't see reactions in the lacy contour firing. So this is why it's very important to test out at different temperatures. Now based on this project I can make some decisions as to whether I want to use different color combinations for other projects in larger amounts, see how those do, and I will have more confidence in the likelihood of success than I would have before doing all these test tiles. And I've got a pretty cool plate as a result. So good luck testing, have fun, make some cool stuff, and enjoy. I'll see you guys in the studio. Bye.